So in every musician's life, or in every person's life, I suppose, there would be moments that we would consider as pivotal to uh, um, our station in life then and our station in life ever since that moment. I guess that's why we call it the game-changing moment. For me, if I really had to pick, because there certainly isn't only one, um, I would have to go with the musical moment that really turned things around for me in a, in a big way. Um, as a kid, obviously, I listened to a lot of music and got inspired by it and had the inkling of the fact that, inkling of a notion that, that when people are really playing, especially in improvised music, they would go places. You know, they would go places that are not mundane, they're not everyday places. And, uh, but I didn't have any experience of that, so I you know, I thought about it. I thought that there was a, a bit of a seed in me that said it must be that way, but I'd never experienced it. And then the moment we're going to talk about is in 1994, as I was recording my first album as a leader, we did the whole recording of eight songs in one day, and then the last song was done in a totally separate studio with an additional musician. Um, you know, so the conditions were very different. And we played a piece that uh, actually wasn't my song. It was a song written by uh, two gentlemen who led a traditional Serbian folk orchestra. And we just did a little bit of an arrangement of that and we played it. But we played it really, really very open and, and there, were, there were solos. And basically, my point is that as we were, even as we started, things started happening to me emotionally, intellectually, on every level that you can imagine that I have never experience to that point. I mean, when I start talking about this, I'm actually starting to uh, relive some of it and, and it's shivers. I mean, it's literally, I get these, these pleasant chills just, just thinking about the moment. So eventually, as it kept going, I, I noticed that I was, I, I guess Alice in Wonderland would be a good metaphor for this. You're just going into levels and mirrors and, and, and deeper and deeper and let me just, uh, um, qualify this and say I've never ever used any drug ever in my life. I'm possibly the cleanest person you know in that sense to a fault. But the, the things that happened to me in the moments, especially during the guitar solo and the exchange that I had with the guitarist as this was happening, was out of this world. I saw lights and colors. I heard uh, things that I could only describe as, as uh, bombs exploding, but not with that negative connotation of a bomb exploding and being destructive. It was just, it was, it was a, a place of a, a multitude of emotion, uh, a multitude of intellectual cognition. I mean, there's just, it was a totality actually that I've come to then understand is the mark of true art, I think. Uh, when we listen or uh, see good art, uh, we experience a, a, some sort of a holy, I meaning holistic, like as, as in a whole, but also holy as in sacred kind of a feeling. And that, to me, once it happened there, I knew that my life was going to be devoted to pursuing that experience. And I'm happy to say, that, you know, obviously it doesn't happen on every show, uh, but as I get older, I get closer and closer to being able to get there in, in this explorative mode of, of just playing interactive music and, and searching for things that, that go beyond music and the daily experience. But certainly, 
that session, which was done in October 94 at an ungodly hour at Berkeley College of Music, actually, is where we did it. And I should mention the musicians, Bato Andonov on guitar, Jeff Elwood on tenor saxophone, and Vasil Hadjimanov on the keys, and Jim Thompson, who was the engineer who put it together. So those guys were really instrumental in me having uh, basically what amounts to a game-changing moment.